Hello, beekeeping friends, David and Sherry with you today. Hey, Sherry, how are you? Yeah, good, good. This is a big day for us. Big day, <laughs> package bee weekend. That's right, lots wow. of things going on, lots of people going on, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But you know what, David, they had a really, really cool um, study that was just published. Yeah. And I really thought it was important for us to, yeah. to go over that, we to, have to, to go talk over. to you. We really do, it's, it's I think interesting. It's very misleading. Because when I first saw it, it, is. it and, is. and by the way, Sherry and I constantly um, extract all the beekeeping studies off the internet or from the news agencies and all that. We constantly just look at these studies over and over, several of them mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. And so when I read it, I instantly thought it was saying one thing. And I was like, I read the title and I was fooled by the title. <laughs> it was. The title is not good. I know. It's not, it's not good because it, the title, I think, is very misleading. To me, the title really says is. the opposite. It does. Yeah. It, it almost says the opposite. And then so when I started reading it, I was like, wait a minute, I'm confused. I thought they said this, but now the, it's saying that. Yeah. So we yeah. thought you would be confused and we wanted to get in there and explain it because really there's some exciting things that this article shows. I, I, it's, it's, it was shocking to me it really was it was I, shocking I, I i was really really surprised but now this is this is what we do folks so so we might get this study offline and david's able to go through it as a master beekeeper and and uh he talks about it and and they um tear it apart with his scientist friends and his <laughs> yeah, we do and his you know college professors you know they've got they've got a whole think tank group of people that sit and just tear these kind of things apart but then people like me come along, and I'm not smart like those oh, guys you are. are too. And and I say, that's not what it says to me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you're going to have to explain it to me. So that's why we like to sit and talk. And I say, no, David, I don't understand that from from what you're getting out of that. I'm not understanding that. So we need to figure out how to make sure that our viewers, who are like me understand exactly what this report is saying so that it's not confusing. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. So you, you look at it from a beekeeper's point of view. I'm just a regular beekeeper. Maybe a one-year-old beekeeper, two-year two, two year beekeeper. You know, yeah. I can do it. Yeah. I just don't understand a lot of the science like, yeah. like you do. I understand so. what you're saying. So mm -hmm. um, uh, when I read the title and I, I briefly started approaching this article, I immediately said, oh my, this changes everything that I mm. teach, this this disproves everything that I <laughs> I but stand it's, for. But it's the opposite. It's the opposite. It, it actually stamps an approval on it, everything it that, that you it teach. Does. It but, just doesn't, it does it in so, kind of a convoluted so when way. I, when I read it, I'm like, well, I know my studies and what my work shows, so I disagree with this, and I just set That's it right. aside. She That's right. read it, and she said, hey, did you read the article, David? The new, yeah, I said, yeah, I read it. I don't agree with it. She's like, no, it, it's not what you said, what you think. You didn't read it thoroughly, and you did read it thoroughly and so let's talk about it okay um, all right well, first let me show it right here on the screen and you can okay. maybe, maybe you saw it too and we're just going to go through it and Sherry's going to help and I'll, I'll talk about it too we're going to show you what this study shows about um, how bees different whether it's maybe a commercial operation mm -hmm. and how they mm -hmm. how they handle and manage their hives versus most people new beginners you know hobbyists, side hobbyists mm -hmm versus mm -hmm. those who say, I don't want to do anything to my hives. I want to be a minimalist. Chemical free. Chemical free. Low and intervention. Low intervention. And some mm -hmm. people even say bees would be better off if we did nothing at all. So this study right. evaluates those three levels. Right, right. And so it's the scientists at Penn State that did this. Yes. And they did it over a period of three years, over hundreds and hundreds of hives with just regular bees. In two keepers. different states, Pennsylvania right. and West right. and Virginia. And yeah. they came up, so anyway, it's the, the title was study shows organic beekeeping rivals conventional methods, but that is not what it, yeah. so, what is in the the yes. actual thing. It, so, it doesn't rival it. That's right. But what they're trying to say is, hey folks, did you know that even though they're conventional beekeeping, which is chemicals, it's antibiotics, it's um, lots of um, getting in the hives and and synthetic doing things, treatments. synthetic yeah. chemical treatments. Right that what they're calling organic beekeeping is just as effective as all of those commercial things. My and that's what they're saying. They're saying it's just as effective. Yes. It doesn't rival it. Yes. It's just as effective. But my, what I confused, I thought yeah. they were saying that, that 
organic means you do nothing at all. Right. Right. That's what I thought. That's the one thing that, that I think needs to be uh, taken out. So they, so they evaluated conventional, organic, and um, what did they call the last one? Oh, the third one? Yeah. It was like... They called it chemical-free management. That's what I thought. Chemical-free, right. so, yeah. so they had those three. So when we talk about conventional, we're talking about commercial guys. We're talking about synthetic chemicals. We're talking about antibiotics. We're talking about those kind of interventions. Now, when we're talking about chemical-free, we're talking about people with almost no intervention, no inspections. We're not checking on the queen. We're leaving everything not alone. Not looking for mites. We're not looking for mites. And we are treating. certainly not using any kind of chemicals or antibiotics whatsoever. No. That's chemical free. Right. But now what they're saying is organic is the one that really is the best. And organic is integrated pest management, which we have taught for zillions of years now. Absolutely. Integrated pest management and organic chemicals, which yes. would be... Well, things like Formic Pro, acetic acid, yeah. So those are organic. Anything that's not synthetic. Right. Yeah. So, and that is, is, they're finding that is the best overall compared to conventional, compared to chemical-free, that the winners of this are the people who are raising them and they're calling it organic. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to have organic honey. No, it doesn't. Organic honey, is there's a that's whole a bunch of game. rules. Yeah, let's don't even go there. Yeah, that's, that's a whole that's a different, different rules about the paints you can use and the chemicals you can use and how far away you have to be uh, to be pesticide free. That's From that's farm that's fields, something different. You can't put them on pallets and, and all that. Right. Yeah. So, but they're calling this organic free. So, so, so yeah. bring out some highlights because I really liked uh, some of the things that you want to that you showed me. I wanted you wanted you to show our audience. Okay. So, so one of the things that they said is, sh is said that it showed that organic in the conventional management systems increased winter survival by more than a hundred and eighty percent. Wow. Over the chemical free low intervention. 180%. 180%. That is just amazing over, to me. Over which one? Over so explain that a little bit more, more. So conventional and organic, which is, you know, the commercial guys we talked about. Organic is integrated pest management, chemical organic. Organic chemicals. chemicals organic treatment. Yeah. Um uh, a little bit lower intervention, not maybe not yeah. not not in the hives, you know. But you're still doing mite tests. You're you're, you're checking yeah. for mites. You're checking for beetles. You're and taking you're, care of the problems in the hives, and, and you're treating. Yeah. Per, they live 180 percent longer in the winter than those who do nothing. Who do nothing? Exactly. That's what the study says. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know you could top 100 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. percent, but 180 percent. 180 percent better survival. And here's the other thing: they more make 120 percent more honey. They make 120 percent more honey than people who yeah. go chemical free and don't do a lot of interventions. So the reason this study is cool to me because I get some people here on my YouTube channel that will say, you know what, bees would be so much better if we would do nothing at all. In fact, bees out in nature nature, nobody's treating them for mites, nobody's helping them along by feeding them, and yet they do fine. That's not true at all, it's, is it? It's not. David, we've had bee trees here that we've, we've kept an right. eye on over the years. They don't live more than a year or two, no, we've and tested, they die. Yeah, we tested that out. We cannot get a, 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 a natural hive to live in our tree, in a tree here on the mm -hmm. property, ever more than two years. I don't think there's ever been a time they've survived the winter. I, no, there, we have none right now. Yeah. We have none right now. We have none that are in a tree, you mean? Right, in a yeah. tree. Yeah. In a tree that no, have, have survived. The reason no. we're able to do this study is because a lot of uh, arborists will call us up and say, can we bring a big tree <laughs> full of bees to your house? They cut out the bee nest, and I'll say, sure, I'd love another tree to study. So they bring it out all intact, they keep it upright, and they plant it there. Yeah. And you've probably seen you know, videos before, and they just don't make it. Yeah. I, I mean, sometimes they do a couple of years, but you know, Two be, at the most. Beyond, yeah, that, but beyond that. It's like any kind of farm animal. We live out in the country. If I didn't touch my chickens and I did nothing with my chickens, do you know how long my chickens would live? I do. <laughs> my chickens wouldn't live a week. The coyotes would get them. They'd be attacked by other animals. When you are a farmer, you have to take care of your livestock. That's true. And that includes bees. 
And, and, I mean, it's the same thing with pets, too, when you live, like, in the country and that sort of thing. Well, not, you don't even have to live in the country. You can live in town. You know that when you domesticate animals, when you take care of them, they yeah. live a lot longer than the animals that you ignore and you, and you just let them stay outside. You know, here, when we have cats that go outside, a cat won't live a year out here, you know, because of what, all the things that could happen to it, mm -hmm. the things that can catch, the things that can go wrong. Absolutely. And that's the same way it is with bees. When yeah. you've got those things in your yard, you are now responsible for taking care of those and making sure that they are the best that they can possibly be. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, the studies, the studies prove it. It's a, to me, it's a very, it just does. it's a very valid study, you know, because it was done by, I think, very competent uh, scientists and mm -hmm. it was done with the right amount of hives across two different states so it was a real thorough study that was done here's the thing the study wasn't necessarily done by scientists saying let's let's do it our way they actually got beekeepers right they they did it with the beekeepers yeah they got beekeepers to so say they actually, show us what you're doing right exactly so they actually sat down and said show us what you're doing and, and we're just going to wow. watch what you do Woo. and we're going to see what it ends up it's yeah. it's not like okay you all use the same chemical and then at the end of the study yeah. we'll, we'll figure it out it yeah. wasn't that we're just going to sit here and see what you do exactly and then we're oh going to compare gosh. it to everything else i'm so excited about that it is it is really really cool i don't really need validated you know because of all the things that i tell people to do like check for mites Feed your bees when you're not getting, you know, a honey flow or something. I, I don't need validated, but it sure feels good. <laughs> you know, and, and the fact is, David, we've done this enough years now that we Decades. know that in 10 years, something new will come along or yeah, something to, right. something to change yeah. it. But for now, for right now, at this time, this is what the studies I are showing was, us. You know, in the picture here, they showed my winter be kind on there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, and that a was, lot of people use our winter be they kind, do, they so do. they they were actually you know in yards with winter be kinds, and they were they were saying that that's that was one of the hives, that's one of the uh, uh, categories that does produce 120 percent mm -hmm. more honey mm -hmm. and 180 cent better winter survival. Supplemental feedings are yes. one of the best things, and you know, and there's a lot of people who say no, you know, we don't we don't feed bees, and and we used to actually say we used to, I used to be down you know road. we yeah. used to say you I know tried that. don't you know don't do it, but the ideal back then was. Oh, well, if the bees get used to just drinking sugar water, you know, they're going to get lazy and they won't, they won't go to the flowers yeah. and then you'll just have sugar water, mm. you know, sort of thing. I don't so, think they get lazy because, you know, you'll, you can feed bees sugar water like in the spring or in the fall. And when there's a floral source, they'll stop eating your sugar water. They really do. Oh, sure. Remember, I put the pollen oh, sure. powder out there. Oh yeah, they don't like after, it. After after winter was warming up a bit, I dumped pollen powder out there. Uh -huh. They devoured it. And they but it as now. soon as a maple tree started giving pollen out, they didn't go to my pollen substitute. Right. So you know, I don't right. think we're going to be like competing uh, with sugar water versus floral sources from the nectaries of flowers. They do prefer that. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to put this we're going to put this link in your okay. uh, YouTube video. Yeah. It's also on our Facebook page so yeah. you can look at it yourself. If you want to yell at us in the comments, you can, but the fact is we're just we're just telling you what what's going on. Just repeating it's, the news. It's, yeah, we're just repeating it. Yeah. So you yell if you want, but <laughs> well, really we, it won't do any good. <laughs> really, we made this video. We were making the video because we want to clarify because to both of us, the title was very misleading. It is. It's it gave misleading. the impression that if you put bees in a box and don't touch them and do anything, they do better than if you manage them. That's not what the article's about. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the part we mm -hmm. wanted to clarify. Yeah. I can't believe, Sherry, I pulled you out of package B day to make a video. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. that's crazy. We've got people out there wanting wanting packages right on the now. Door. <laughs> like, what are you doing making a video? Uh, 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 honk, honk. That's how important we thought this was. <laughs> yeah. And we have one bee that wants to be in the video. He and yeah. she's over there by the window now, yeah. so we don't have to worry about that. But thanks for joining me today. Hey, by the way, it's important that I tell you that if you do like my presentation of all my YouTube videos, you might like my classes. I think you're really gonna like my online courses. So many of you tell me you've taken my classes. I'm gonna leave links in the description below. I really would like you to take a class with me because just like this article points out, I have been teaching this for well over a decade on how to get your bees through the winter better, how to get more honey production. That's what I'm about. That's what we're about. We're helping hobbyists enjoy beekeeping 
and keep healthier bees and make fewer mistakes. So take one of our classes, that's for sure. And Sherry, people liked the last video that I made tremendously. I went out there and showed them all these different frames and why bees do this and why they pull funky comb out like this. Good video. If you want to watch that video, watch it. It's right over here next to Sherry. <laughs> and we'll see you guys over there.